Alright guys, hey what's going on? We're going over DC motor control using the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins just like we did with the servo. Now we're going to be using the, in the GPIO pins but it's important to know that you can use any GPIO pin that you actually want. You just need to reflect that inside of your code. For the first setup that we're going to be doing it's going to be 4, 5, 16, 18, and 22. And uh, the only GPIO pins out of that are actually 16, 14, and 22. And the other GPIO pins for, we're using for the second setup is 31 and 29. The skills that we're going to be using today are going to be using the actual GPIO pins and we're going to be using pulse with modulation to actually manipulate the motor just like we did with the servo. We're also going to be using time. NumPy, we're not going to be using that inside of the code today, but it is important to know. Time, uh, it's not natively on Python, so uh, we need to actually import that as well. And you can see an example of that in the upper right. Now for the commands, you can look into this in more depth if you would like to, but we are going to be using this so you will see examples of these commands or uh, this code inside of our Python script that we make. Right now we're just going to actually create the script names. So I'm just using the touch command to actually make them. And uh, now we can actually open all three of them up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're actually gonna import rpi.gpio and we're going to rename it as GPIO and that's actually what I'm doing with Azure. And the next thing, we're actually making a variable that is uh, representative of uh, GPIO.PWM and we're uh, just sending out a frequency on pin 22 of 1000. And now we're making some methods and I'm just copy and pasting them out, but uh, we are going to be using these methods to tell it to go forward, to tell it to go backward, and then we're also going to send a value into there. Uh, and that's the actual speed variable that you'll see up there. And then we're also just calling the methods inside a try, and once it's uh, done, it will finally uh, do the cleanup. And I did uh, screw up a few things here, and you'll see me work through that. You can see I didn't actually rename the methods up here, so. See fifty percent usage right here. I didn't import a variable on uh, the stop method, so I need to get rid of that. Okay, I'm just going to copy all this code and then paste it out right inside a small DC motor V2. It is important to know that all this code is going to be inside of the description if you guys ended up wanting to take a look at it or manipulate it to use what it, to use it for your own projects. Just giving you a bit bigger look of it if you need to look at all the code. Now we're actually going to be making a while statement. We're also making a variable name speed and we're making an equivalent to zero. And as long as the value is less than 100, it's going to continue running inside of that while loop. And every time it runs through the while loop, it's going to increase by one. And time, we're using that because we don't want it to immediately go up to 100. We want it to be a slow transition. And you'll actually see that reflected here. And we're doing the same thing in the opposite direction. You see, we're actually calling the methods forward and backward for the two separate uh, while loops that we have going here. And you see, yeah, it goes right up to 100 and then it'll stop. Now I'm gonna actually set this up with a little bit bigger uh, H-Bridge controller and we're gonna be using a little bit bigger DC motor here.
and you'll see I do edit the code from uh, the small DC motor uh, V2, but uh, we're going to try to reuse some of them parts. Uh, one of the biggest things is is that uh, we're not going to want to stop it immediately after it gets to 100 because it is pretty quick, so I don't want it to stop it immediately and then fling across my table. <clears throat> so one thing important to know is that we're actually using only two GPIO pins, and that would be 29 and 31, like I said before. And uh, they're actually both going to be outporting uh, the PWM signal with this H-Bridge controller. So, and they're going to be both at the frequency of 1000 and uh, we're just naming them two different variables to represent that. And uh, I did uh, end up changing the GPIO.output so that it will actually reflect the new pins that we are going to be using. And this is like I was saying. I wanted to make another while loop so it came from 100 and then until it got to zero I kept running through the while loop and just my, it subtracted one every time, time it ran through the while loop from the speed variable. And you can see it's not doing anything. Yep, I forgot to put the variable there. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, I was helpful to you. And the next thing that I'm probably going to put on here is how to use an Xbox controller to control a DC motor. So if uh, you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.